Hello and welcome to this Divine Partnership Coaching video. In today's video, um, it's just a general for uh, Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine, and Karmics. And it's about learning to look for and see the best in your partner without being codependent. Um, because a lot of folks who are starting on this journey are healing from codependent issues. And there's a big difference between recognizing somebody who is, as we call it, in another dimension, meaning that they are typically a very good person and they are going through, they're, they're healing some traumas and, and in a dark night of soul phase, but you otherwise recognize that they're, that they are a healthy person otherwise. Um, and offering them genuine forgiveness and looking for the best in them. Now, it's my belief that everybody has pretty much been going through that, but it's it's up to you to discern, to, to go through and s discern the difference between your instincts and, and any trust issues and stuff you need to heal from and your intuition saying, not that person, go to another person, another person. And... First, you have to get to a place of, of, of healing challenges with judgment and resentment, and that's part of what the, you know, the, the steps that I've created through the Path of the Emperor and Path of the Empress have been about, but also these general videos, too. And once you can get to a place of healing your any need to feel like you need to judge anybody else or, or punish them, which can also come through, like, you're not treating me the way that I want to be treated, so I'm not going to talk to you. Like, that's a form of punishment. And if you are in an energy of doing that, then that is for you to heal. That says more about you than it does about somebody who has done something to you. Because there's no reason that we can't continue to be civil to pretty much anybody. And if somebody breaks your boundaries enough to where you feel like you're going to be uncivil, the best thing in that moment is simply to remove yourself from rendezvousing with them. And rendezvous with people who are in a good place. Now, that being said, and I just want to make sure that I'm, I, I am not in any way encouraging anyone to stay in any sort of toxic relationships, and it's up to you to learn the differences between somebody who is like a potential divine match who just needs a little bit of support and love to get through their dark night of soul period versus somebody who is very off timing from you in their healing path and are going to continue being a karmic and likely continue staying in toxic energy longer than you are <laughs> unless you stay with them now assuming that whoever it is that you're thinking about uh, this is most likely for those of you who are in separation of some kind from a divine partner that you already recognize and or have been with and it's important to be careful, especially if you get into watching um, any tarot readings online or you have friends that uh, offer advice from their trauma responses and pain bodies, to recognize there are certain things that you will do for your divine partner that you likely wouldn't do for others. And it's also important to try to find a balance between, you know, not over giving to them things that you wouldn't give to anybody else, but to just to recognize the the significance of your call towards them. And the reason I say that is because, like, um, you might have a divine partner who is, let's say, breadcrumbing. They're just offering you little bits of information, little bits, um, little bits of love, a little bit of stuff here. And like if we were, a lot of people suggest that when somebody breadcrumbs you, you just cut it off, Psst, not taking that. And you could choose that. If that's what you feel called to do, then do that. That is probably not your divine partner. But there is potential that if that desire to cut off somebody who's giving you small amounts is part of your pain body, then it is good to explore that. But it could be that you are, if your divine partner is dealing especially with mother-father wound issues, or they've, they're have they healing from releasing their exes, that, that those breadcrumbs like for somebody else could be loaves of bread. And so it's good to look at the best and that, like, what do you think that their intentions are? If you feel like their intentions are to lead you on, 
well, then recognize that the people that are in your vibration are reflecting you. How are you leading people on? Always reflect back to yourself and look for the healing in that. And then once you've made sure that you've done your healing, then think about it. Like if you were somebody who had been very hurt and you were dealing with traumas and you weren't sure who you could trust, wouldn't you be very selective about the information that you offered to people? Even somebody that you felt like you could trust you're still learning to take those baby steps um in offering people your real vulnerabilities it's likely that if you have already connected with your divine partner whether you're in separation or together that you're going to have these moments where they're they are growing for you and they are offering you information but for them what might feel like a really big thing to do, might feel to you like a really small thing to do. Maybe you've already healed that part in yourself. And if you're feeling like you're in a judgmental space where you're looking, you know, your your automatic response is they're trying to do something to hurt me or this seems like something that somebody else did, then stop and really consider that. I'm not saying that you're wrong. You, you're the only one that can discern whether you are wrong or you are right. But you also have the ability to... Anything that you believe is what manifests. And if you believe that there's always some trick up somebody's sleeve, you're going to manifest people who always have something, some trick up their sleeves. And... Likewise, if you've had, um, if you're, if you are positive that you've found your divine partner and you've been in a, a relationship with them that has been toxic, part of the reason that it has been toxic is because you have either been holding them in villain space or victim space. Typically, they go together. If you feel victimized by them, they likely feel victimized by you, and you guys are doing victim villain stuff. And the way to heal that, the way to recognize, are they even to discern, are they my divine? partner is that if when you stop holding them in villain in victim or villain space do they heal do you heal if you stop feeling like a victim do they stop feeling like a victim if you remove yourself you're neither a victim or a villain and you start exhibiting healthy boundaries from a kind space do they start doing the same thing if they don't they're not likely your divine partner if they do within i'm gonna say a, a, a week or two if they start doing it within a week or two they probably are your divine partner and you'll notice and as you heal an increase in them healing as you look for the best in them and if they don't end up doing that then they are likely a karmic and they are likely there to to help you learn to have healthy boundaries. Either way, it is in general a healthy practice to look for the best in most people. And in times like these, I mean, this is a timeless video, but at the time that I'm recording it, we have the big quarantine going on. There's a lot of frustrations and a lot of stresses. And it's always important to recognize that we don't know what somebody's story is. We don't know what they're coming from. And we don't like to be judged. It's not good to judge other people either. And any place within us that feels triggered or feels um, attacked or controlled by somebody else is a space within us to be healed. And it really is not so much about them. And once you get into higher vibrations and you are in a healed space, you are you will flow more naturally <clears throat> with the recognition that when other people come to you in their pain bodies and their anger or sadness or victim or villain space, it says more about them than it does about you. And all you have to do is care about how you feel enough to keep your vibration in a good space, to uphold your boundaries with kindness and authenticity, and to just keep working on your healing path. And either they will join you or they will be repelled to go off onto their onto a, another healing path. Because sometimes we have to make big enough messes with people that will make big enough messes with us before we decide we've had enough and we want to heal. And likewise, it's important to look for the best in people because if you end up in an entanglement with a karmic, you are likely not going to be able to, I'm going to say release them, but um, you're going to be stuck in dynamic with them until you can offer them, I'm going to say a sort of gratitude. Even, even if you end up 
having to do something that ends up creating like, kind of antagonizing a tower moment, a, a fight or a separation in that. It still has to be from a place of authenticity and gratitude and recognition that of non-judgment like that they're not there to hurt you intentionally and even though it hurts and you should definitely feel valid in feeling your feelings of that hurt that they are doing it from a space of their pain bodies and their trauma responses and that your separation from them is not about a punishment to them it is about continuing on your healing path, recognizing you are worthy of doing that, that you are worthy of feeling grateful and happy, even if somebody else is not feeling that way, and cultivating a sense of gratitude about them providing the contrast that helped you become that person, and then having a same sort of faith in them that you have in your divine partner in the in, in a different sort of sense like you know that the timing is off you can recognize and discern that they're still in a karmic path but that all karmics become divine femmes and divine masculines and we all play our part in karmic learning whether that's dispersing old karma negative karma or creating new positive karma so either way learn to look for the best in people I guarantee you nine times out of ten there isn't anybody in this world who intentionally wants to hurt you. And of the minor one percent that do want to hurt you, your you, spirit's got your back. So anybody that is in your vibration that you feel like is hurting you emotionally, physically, financially, it is much more likely about a projection of your fear of being hurt that is manifesting people who subconsciously play out their own karmic issues through you and that hurts you and the best way to prevent that from happening is not to be hyper vigilant it is to look for the best in people look for the helpers look for the people who offer unconditional love look for those aspects within yourself because when you can give them to yourself you no longer need them from others and then you get them from others and then you give them to others and then you create a synergy with the earth and with spirit and with others that helps bring out the best in other people and then the real fun can begin because more people will want to be around you because you offer a source of upliftment, of, of alignment with positivity and joy, but realistic ease. All right, if anybody has any further questions or would like more details, please feel free to comment below.